Question 5 from Section 2 of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination. Planets outside our solar system are called exoplanets. An exoplanet of mass 5.69 times 10 to the power 27 kilograms orbits a star of mass 3.83 times 10 to the power 30 kilograms. You can see from the diagram there that you have the exoplanet and we have the star. And the distance between the centres of these objects is 3.14 times 10 to per 11 metres. It's not drawn to scale. Now for two marks in part AI, we're asked to compare the mass of the star with the mass of the exoplanet in terms of orders of magnitude. Well, when we're comparing something, we take a ratio. So the first thing we do is we put down the mass of the star, we write it out, and it's going to be 3.83 multiplied by 10 to the power 30 kilograms. So that's the mass of the star. And we divide that by the mass of the exoplanet. And the mass of the exoplanet is going to be 5.69 times 10 to the power 27 kilograms. Now all we have to do to compare these two is to divide one by the other. And if we do that, we get a answer of 673. So that's almost saying that the mass of the star is 673 times more massive than the exoplanet. But we want to answer that in terms of orders of magnitude. Now, 673 is near enough equal to 1,000 if we're looking at the closest to either 100 or 1,000 or 10,000. So we say 673 is approximately equal to 1,000, which is equal to 10 to the power 3. So another way of saying this is that the mass of the star, mass of the star, is 3 orders of magnitude. 3 orders of magnitude bigger than the exoplanet. I'll just write it like that. 3 orders of magnitude uh, bigger than the exoplanet. Bigger than the mass of the exoplanet. So we're looking at orders of magnitude. You're comparing the how much times bigger or times smaller as in terms of powers of 10. In this case, it's 10 to power 3. So just take the ratio, uh, find the number, 673, and round it up to the nearest 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000. In this case, it's going to be 1,000. And we know 1,000 equals 10 to power 3, and that's the order of magnitude we say. That the, the star is three orders of magnitude bigger than the exoplanet. 5. Part A. Part 2. The distance between the exoplanet and the star is 3.14 times 10 to the power 11 metres. And we have to calculate the gravitational force between the star and the exoplanet. So we go to our data sheet, our equation sheet, and we get the following. We get the force of gravitational attraction between two bodies of mass m1 and m2 is given by the equation F equals G, the universal gravitational constant, times m1, m2, that's the masses of both of the objects we're looking at, and we have to divide that by r squared. So our first thing is to look at what the masses are, in fact, and there are the masses there. So the mass of the first exoplanet, which we'll call m1, so m1, we can write down as equal to 5.69 times 10 to the power 27 kilograms. What's the mass of the star? Well, the mass of the star we'll call m2, and that's going to be equal to 3.83 times 10 to the power 30 kilograms. So we have just got to find the g, the gravitational constant, the universal gravitational constant. Once again, go to our data sheet, and we can see that the universal gravitation, the universal constant of gravitation, capital G, is of the value 6.67 times 10 to the uh, minus 11. So we can put that in G is 6.67 from the from the data sheet, which we've shown you there, times 10 to minus 11. And it's got a lot of units here, which we'll just not bother writing down at the moment. So we can take that away, and we've got one other thing to do, and that's to find the distance r. And we're told that the distance between the centres of the star and the exoplanet is 3.14 times 10 to the power 11 metres. So that's all our data. All we have to do is plug all those numbers in, so the force of 
gravitational attraction is going to be G, which is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. We're going to multiply that by M1, which is 5.69 times 10 to the power of 27. And multiply it by M2, which is 3.83 times 10 to the power 30. We'll put a bracket on that to do that calculation at the top, and we have to divide the whole lot by r squared. So that's 3.14 times 10 to the power 11, and remember, according to the formula, we have to square that number. So you take your time over it and plug it into your calculator, and you get an answer as follows. 1.47 times 10 to the power 25, and the units of force is going to be a newtons. So it's a straightforward to plug the numbers in uh, to the formula F equals G M1 M2 R squared. Take your time, do not forget to square the, the distance between the centres R at the bottom and that's your answer for that one. Question 5 continued part B. The gravitational force between the star and the exoplanet causes the star to follow a circular path as the exoplanet orbits the star. Small differences in the wavelength of the light from the star are observed on Earth. Light from the star is redshifted when the star moves away from the Earth and blue shifted when the star moves towards the Earth. And there's a diagram there not to scale. You can see that the star performs a small circle, which means it's going to be moving towards the Earth and moving away from the Earth. And that's due to the influence of the exoplanet, which is orbiting the actual star. So when we have it redshifted, the light from the star is redshifted, we know that the star is moving away. And we know when the star is moving uh, in the kind of downward path shown there uh, on the circular path it makes towards the Earth, it's going to be blue shifted. Now for three marks, we're asked to calculate the redshift of the light from the star observed on the Earth when the star is moving away from the Earth at a speed of 6.60 times 10 to the power 3 meters per second. Now we go to our relationship sheet, you can see we have two equations which tell us how to calculate the redshift. The first one is in terms of wavelengths and the second one is in terms of a speed compared with the speed of light. Now we're given no information about the difference in the wavelengths of the observed and at rest, so the only equation we can use is the bottom one, z, the redshift, equals v divided by c. So we mark that down and we have z the redshift is going to equal to the speed it moves away divided by the speed of light. You're comparing the ratio of these speeds. So we'll plug in the numbers. V is going to be 6.60 times 10 to the power 3. And it's going to be meters per second. And we divide that by the speed of light, which is 3.0 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. And if we do that on a calculator, we end up with 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5 and that's going to be our redshift. Now we have no units because meters per second cancel with meters per second so the Z, the redshift is a, a complete and utter a dimensionless quantity. So that's the answer. Z, the redshift is 2.2 times 10 to the minus 5. Part 2. For an exoplanet of greater mass at the same distance from the star, suggest whether the radius of the circular path followed by the star would be greater than, less than, or the same as that for an exoplanet of smaller mass. Well, let's take a look at the diagram we have. First of all, we have the exoplanet in red going round a circular orbit round the star in yellow there. And the black circle represents the sort of kind of wobble, the circular movement of the star caused by the gravitational influence of the exoplanet and the star, the force of gravitational attraction. So we can see in this situation we have a force of gravitational pull towards the star shown like that. And Newton's uh, third law says that the star itself will experience a force of equal and opposite magnitude uh, pulling on it due to the exoplanet. So that's why you get this, this star moving in this little kind of wobble uh, around in a circle. Now, if we increase the mass of the exoplanet but keep it the same distance apart, then according to our original equation, we have F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. We can see if we keep the radius the same distance 
uh, same distance apart, then we can ignore the radius, we can just ignore that, and we're left with G, a constant, M1, M2. But if we make M1, which is the exoplanet, bigger, we're going to have a bigger force of attraction. So we're going to have this situation here, if I can draw this in here, and we're going to have a bigger force acting uh, on the exoplanet, pulling it towards the the star, and likewise, the exoplanet is pulling the star towards it as well, an equal and opposite force. But because there's going to be a bigger gravitational force here, then the wobble is going to become bigger. In fact, the circular path in which the star makes is going to be bigger, just because we have increased the mass, and if we increase the mass of the exoplanet, we're increasing the force of attraction between the star and exoplanet, which results in that wobble getting bigger. And that's how they can tell the mass of these planets, these exoplanets, when we look at the wobble from the star. If the wobble is quite big, we know it's going to be an exoplanet of big mass. If the wobble is going to be quite small, that is a small circular path the star takes, then we know there's definitely, been, there's definitely an exoplanet there with a smaller mass compared with a, a bigger wobble. So in this case then, by keeping the same distance from exoplanet to the star, but a bigger exoplanet in terms of its mass is going to make that circular path of the star in fact bigger and that's just due to the increase in the gravitational attraction between the two heavenly bodies.